today. Today's lesson is going to focus on a basic economic concept that is fundamental to our study of market economics. At this point in your course, you have probably already learned the definition of a market. A market is simply a place where buyers and sellers meet to engage in mutually beneficial exchanges with one another. In a market economy, there are two fundamental types of markets that must exist in order for mutually beneficial exchanges to occur. A market economy is one in which households and firms engage in exchanges in both resource markets and in product markets that benefit both the firms and the households themselves. So this video lesson is going to illustrate the flow of goods, services, land, labor, capital, and money in a market economy between households and firms and seek to understand how individuals stand to benefit from the trades that take place in a market economy. So let's start off with a couple of definitions here. First, let's look at the household side of our graph. We see that households possess three scarce resources. Now, you'll recall from a previous lesson that something is scarce when it is both desired and limited in supply. In the case of land, labor, and capital, these are all resources that exist in finite amounts in the world. Land resources are those that can be used to grow crops, to f mine minerals, to catch fish, to log forests. All of the land resources, these are the natural resources that are used to produce goods and services that we like to consume. Labor, of course, that's just human resources. This is any input into the production of a good or service that involves workers. We're talking about factory workers, we're talking about high-skilled workers, educated people, and uneducated. Anybody who adds to the production of something is considered labor. Capital, this is the technology that is used to produce goods. I put a computer here because I'm a teacher, and in fact, in the production of this very video lesson, the capital resource that I'm using is a computer. Capital resources also include things like factory equipment, uh, tractors for farmers, any sort of technology that is used in the production of goods. Households are the owners of these scarce resources. The land is held by either private individuals or households through the public sector. Labor, of course, this is workers that live at home and go to work at a factory or in an office every day. And capital, we provide capital to the market economy through our savings of money. That will be explained a little bit later on when it comes to how firms acquire capital in the production of goods and services. So there you see one side of the circular flow model of a market economy. We see that households possess three productive resources, land, labor, and capital. We must exchange these resources in the resource market. So the first flow that we're going to illustrate in our circular flow is the flow of resources from households to firms in the resource market. Now why do firms need resources? What are firms going to do with the resources that they get from households in the resource market? As we can see in the left side of our circular flow model, firms are essentially entities that are established by entrepreneurs or individuals from households that wish to start a business in order to make some money. Now entrepreneurs and the firms that they run need resources in order to make money. So firms will wish to acquire resources from households so that they can put these resources to use to make goods and services that they can sell back to households. So the resource market is where the entire circular flow begins. Firms are the buyers in a resource market. Firms buy resources, households sell resources and the resources that are being bought and sold are land, labor, and capital. So in the circular flow we should see resources flow from households to the resource market to firms so that they can be employed in the production of goods and services. We also learned in a previous lesson that in a world of scarce resources there is nothing free. Therefore, firms must give something up in order to acquire these three scarce resources. And that's where money comes into play. As we can see here, money is what makes a circular flow function. Firms, or the entrepreneurs that start the firms, must have money at their disposal in order to begin a business. With some money, firms can exchange 
in the resource market for the land, labor, and capital they need. So in the other direction in our circular flow model, we're going to see money flowing from firms to households. Money, of course, is what makes the circular flow function. Households are providing land, labor, and capital in the resource market, which are the factors of production. These are the things that firms need in order to make goods and services. But in exchange for these things, firms are going to pay money to households. The money firms pay households in the resource market is income for households. For our labor, households earn wages. For our land, we earn rent. And for our capital, we earn interest. These money incomes are the incentive that households have to provide land, labor, and capital to firms in the resource market. Now, why do we care about money? Anybody who has ever been shopping knows why money is important. Money is what allows households to acquire the goods and services that they demand in the product market. So now we've got half of our circular flow model made. We see that households are providing resources in the form of land, labor, and capital to entrepreneurs, to the firms in the economy, in the resource market. These act as factors of production for firms, which they can use to make goods and services, which they can then sell us in the product market. But nothing's free in a market economy, so of course money has to flow in the other direction. Money is flowing from firms to households in the resource market. Now, where are we in the model? We see that money has changed hands in the resource market. Households have earned money. But what good is money if not to consume with? So what are households going to consume? This brings us to the product market. With the factors of production, with the land, labor, and capital that firms have acquired in the resource market, they can begin manufacturing or producing goods and services. So we should start to see production occur in the market economy. So now firms have lots of goods and services which they have produced using the resources acquired in the resource market. Of course, the reason for the production that firms have undertaken is to sell. A market economy is all about selling. Households sell resources in the resource market and firms sell goods and services in the product market. So we should start to see these goods and services flow counterclockwise in the product market towards households. And that's exactly what should happen next. The purple arrows represent the flow of goods, services, and resources. So in product markets, firms are the suppliers and households are the demanders. So firms sell and households buy products. Of course, nothing is free in a market economy. In order to acquire these goods and services that they so demand, we can see goods flowing to households, but that doesn't come free. Money must change hands. Money must flow clockwise from households to firms so that firms are earning the profits that they so desperately seek. And that, of course, is the orange arrow in our circular flow model. We will see money flow from households to firms in the product market. So it's a little bit difficult to see here, but what we should notice is that there are arrows indicating the flow of money, land, labor, capital, and goods and services in our circular flow model. Notice that in this case, money is always flowing counterclockwise, and resources, goods, and services are always flowing clockwise. The goal of firms and households in this model of the market economy are very clear. Firms are profit seekers. So the goal of firms is to maximize profits. To do this, firms must sell their goods and services for more than they spent on resources. That's the definition of a profit, essentially. It's when a firm's total revenues are greater than its total costs. In other words, it's sold for more than it costs to produce. And the goals of households. What is the goal of a household here? Is the goal of households just to make money? That's not at all the case. In fact, money is only a medium of exchange in a market economy. The goal of households is to maximize utility. You may be unfamiliar with this word utility, but it has a simple definition in economics, and that is happiness.
in a market economy, we're going to simplify things dramatically here. We're going to say that happiness is achieved through consumption of goods and services. So recall, a market is a place where buyers and sellers meet to engage in mutually beneficial exchanges. Look again at our resource market. How do households benefit from providing land, labor, and capital to firms in the resource market? Well, they do so because they are earning money incomes. Households, of course, are earning incomes in the form of wages, rents, interests, and profits for the entrepreneurs who start the businesses. With these money incomes, households can ultimately acquire the goods and services that they demand in the product market. The goal of any household is to earn a high enough money income to enjoy a level of consumption of goods and services that improves the family standard of living. Now let's look at the product market. Firms, recall, are seeking profits. The goal of firms should be to end up with more money than they started with. Firms sell their goods and services that they produced using the resources acquired in the resource market back to households, hopefully for a profit, earning greater revenues than the firms incurred in costs. So the beneficial nature of the market economy exists insofar as that households willingly supply their resources, land, labor, and capital to firms with the ultimate goal of earning money incomes which can be used to buy goods and services which provide households with utility or happiness. Firms, on the other hand, willingly provide goods and services to households in exchange for the money that they previously had paid those households in the resource markets. The goals are to maximize profits and to maximize utility. This is the essential nature of a market economy. Without these incentives, without these goals of households and firms, a market economy would simply not function and resource allocation would have to be undertaken by another mechanism altogether, such as government control or a command system of some sort. That wraps up this lesson. We will do future lessons on the market economy, including a macroeconomic model, which includes not just households and firms, but also the government and the banking sector.